Space is often attributed to our sky, what we see in it, things beyond our safe place, and things far, far away from here, like black holes, stars much hotter than our own, and planets vastly different and very similar to planet Earth. Why is it, though, that space must be confined to a region? Space is derived from emptiness, an expanse in which things can and do happen. Of course, what we know is within this space, but it's not the space itself. What is it that we cannot see? What makes up this space between? Before we start on our journey to explore things that we cannot see, we have to define the playing field. Luckily, brilliant people before our time have helped define these powers of nature. They are called the Four Fundamental Forces. The first of these, and remaining perhaps the most mysterious of the four, is gravity. You have smaller scale on Earth, it keeps all the people on Earth, it keeps a pencil on a table. Um, keeps everything together. We learn that it has um, everything to do with mass, so how much mass an object has or how much matter uh, an object has um, will kind of dictate how much gravity that object has. For a lot of people, the thought of gravity stops with Sir Isaac Newton's discovery of gravity, with the apple falling from the tree and why we are attracted to Earth. But we've learned that gravity's effects go far beyond that. In fact, there is gravity between every single bit of matter. There's nowhere in space that there's zero G. There's some effect of gravity somewhere. Any time that you have two pieces of matter, whether you can see the matter or you can't, you have gravity in that equation. So it's big. It's between planets, between galaxies. Gravity's reach is well beyond what we can imagine. But despite all of that, it is actually the weakest force. But when you go to lift something up, it actually is quite easy as long as the mass is smaller than you. Imagine that. You, as an individual, can beat out the force of the 5.972 sextillion ton giant that is Earth just by getting out of bed. We overcome gravity all the time, whether using airplanes and lift dynamics to fly in the sky or rockets to lift us up above that. of endeavor, expanding our knowledge, expanding our... So, despite the fact that we can observe it and measure it, there is still so much that we don't understand about gravity. The closest explanation so far, a graviton. This is a hypothetical, is that there's a graviton, but what if we do find it? What if we finally connect it? Einstein went to his grave trying to connect everything together, the theory of the really, really fast and the theory of the really, really small, the quantum realm. What if we find this? If you can connect that with a graviton, which is an idea that's out there, but something that's still not proven, we could finally have this theory of everything. What Stephen Hawking's looking for, what Michio Kaku's looking for, what Einstein's looking for. What's out there? Is it out there? And can we prove it? We don't know. When Isaac Newton starts to talk about his laws of motion and the beginning of physics, he's starting with gravity. We needed more things to explain that. And so that's where we started to understand electromagnetic force. Before Hans Christian Ørsted, about the turn of the 18th century, electricity and magnetism were referred to as different forces. They are, in fact, the same thing. Within our core, um, we have a great deal of iron, and that iron has become magnetized, partially because of the convection of the Earth. When you move metal, so if you move iron, it creates an electric charge. Electromagnetic force has many energetic relations with what we optically perceive every day your desk lamp, fridge magnets, even lightning. 
This visible spectrum, however, is just a small part of the wavelengths that occupy this force. In fact, the visible spectrum is just a small part of this vast array of wavelengths. Electromagnetism is one of the uh, most used tools for viewing space. It's great because it helps us use compasses. If we didn't have magnetic north, we wouldn't have the ability to navigate with the compass. We'd be stuck to the stars and to dead reckoning. If I'm trying to look at how far a planet is, if it's moving away, finding out its orbit, I can find out red shifting and blue shifting. Red shift is a version of the Doppler effect. Light color is what really allows us to be able to do astrophysics. That's how we get to understand what's out there. How we can see if something's moving toward us, which is a blue shift, or moving away from us, which is the red shift. The last two fundamental forces are called, simply, weak and strong nuclear force. First up, the weak force. So unlike uh, forces like gravity or electromagnetic force that we can easily observe, weak force isn't quite as observable. Uh, weak force is actually one of the main forces behind radiation and the force behind the photons which come off of the sun. In astronomy, we actually use radiation to see deep into space. And so we can look at radioactive decay of the universe and how that changes. Um, interestingly, on Earth, uh, the weak force is also involved uh, deep underground. The weak force actually allows energy to be transferred from that magnetism and all that gravity outwards to produce heat. That heat produces uh, the liquid mantle that we have inside the Earth, and that allows for plate tectonics, which means our planet's alive. So the weak force, even though we can't see it, it's doing a lot to make life on Earth possible. This process happens when a hardly measurable amount of matter emits from an atom in the form of energy. But in losing that, it gives off a little bit of energy. Anytime we have a change, there's an emission of energy. Now on the sun, when this happens with hydrogen and helium, and they merge and create that plasma, that weak force puts off that energy in the form of a photon, and so we get light. Which, by the way, is electromagnetic in the visible spectrum. The weak and strong nuclear force is what binds things together at the, at the atomic level. Even below the atomic level, there are particles that help to hold the building blocks of atoms together too. This brings us to our fourth and final force, the strong force. Whenever you talk about the infinitesimally small, you talk about quarks, you talk about the pieces that are making up the rest of what makes up you. There's a lot of empty space in you, but within there are the two different forces, the weak force and the strong force. And the strong force is what's holding the quarks together. It allows them to connect the six different quarks and make up the bigger ones like protons. That's the reason that whenever we look out there and we see something like the Higgs boson, and we're talking about these particles, we call it the God particle. It's what's connecting us to each other. And the strong force is the basis of that on one of the smallest levels we know. It keeps particles together to form larger, more complex particles. It's also the strongest of all the forces. Weighing in at 10 to the 38th times as strong as gravity, it defies electromagnetism in the nucleus and binds atoms together. What you're looking at is, again, it's the basics of everything that's out there. So if you look at something like the sun, and you're looking at how it is fusing everything together in its core, you're looking at the basic breakdowns of what will eventually make up life. So there you have it. Four tested and accepted forces science has today. Some still a mystery. There is some comfort that we can find in what we know so far, which is probably what scientists said 100 years ago as well, until something big happened. See, it was largely accepted that the universe was getting smaller because of the gravitational push on everything, until that theory was put to the test by redshift. In 1929, Edward Hubble proved science wrong with science and demonstrated that the universe is actually expanding. All of these galaxies, all of these planets, stars redshifting away. Where are they going? There's an expansion of the universe happening. The universe is expanding, and that expansion means that there's more to the equation than just gravity. There was a point where we were looking out in the universe, and for some reason, it wasn't that the universe was shrinking, it said it was getting bigger, and we had no idea why.